Okay, hi everybody. Welcome just to a brief tutorial on Maxwell's diagram, just to supplement what's in Ivanov. So page 135 and uh, 9.4, you'll see this truss and uh, Maxwell's diagram and how we go about. So we'll go through and use Bose notation to identify the truss members and the forces that are applied to it externally. So if we start with the first force, just working our way around, makes sense to start at AB. So we've got a vertical down 8 kilonewton force. So if we draw a line here, that's going to be approximately 1 centimetre to 1 kilonewton. So if we draw a line that was, say, 8 centimetres, and we've gone from A to B. Well, now, the text uh, is just written with my mouse, so uh, yeah, it's a little bit average, but you get the idea. Then we have a 4 kilonewton force that starts from B to C. So basically, we just carry that on. And we'll just draw a little line across there, just so that we can see the demarcation point between them. So that's a 4 kilonewton force. So it's gone from B to C. Next one around, we have a 5 kilonewton force from C to D. So we're going up from C. We're going up 5. Well, that's 4. So D, we're just basically drawing over the same line. But D will be a centimetre above there. Now if we have a look at this one here, D to A, we've got a 7 kilonewton force. Now A to B was 8. If we minus this 1 centimetre, so force D to A, D to A is 7, so that works. So this force line here is in balance with the external forces that are supplied on here. Now we've got these uh, angles in here. So from vertical, we've got 30, 30 degrees. These are obviously 60. So if we go from <coughs> A to E at 30 degrees, and we come down here. So that's E. If we actually also have a look, we've got E to D while we're here, and that's a horizontal force. If we go across up here, we have, let's have a look at the other ones that we can possibly fill in while we're here. We've got a, a D to G, but we quite don't quite know where T is yet, and we've got B to F, we're not quite sure where F is yet. We can do possibly C to G, because we know that that's up at 30 degrees. So, not quite sure where it finishes, but I would guess probably going to be around about there somewhere. If we have a look at this line here, B, we know it's horizontal, so it's going to be coming out here somewhere. So, if we do D to G, and F, point there is G and we got E so this must be F 
So we have F to G, it's down this way at that angle. So there's F to G there. So let's just run through this again just to confirm that we've got everything in the right way. So we've got A to B, which is an 8 kilonewton force down. We then go B to C, which is 4, so a total of 12. Then we go C to D, which is a 5 kilonewton force up. And then we go from D to A, which is a 7 kilonewton force up, which is also 12 kilonewtons. So that line there is in balance, matching the external forces on the truss. Then we go from A to E, 30 degrees down. And then we go from B to F, which is horizontal as well. And then we've got a G to C, which is 30 degrees up. And that's obviously going to meet where uh, G is across on that line there, E to D. We can then come down on our G to F line, which is this one. And E to F is on an angle this way, and that re is represented there. So now if you measure, if we've, when we've drew this at a scale of 1 centimetre to 1 kilonewton, so if you made that A to B 8 centimetres, 4 centimetres, and then back up to 5 centimetres, and that balance is going to be the 7 centimetres vertically up. So that's a 12 centimetre, or 12 representing 12 kilonewton force. Do the same with this, A to E. Measure this out here. Measure the length of each of these, and you will find that those now represent the forces in each of those members. Very, very crudely put together, a little bit of a rush, but I felt that sometimes a video presentation is a little bit uh, more helpful rather than just trying to read and interpret. So hopefully you found that useful uh, to help you with Maxwell's diagram in your assignment one. Alrighty, catch you guys later. Cheers. Bye.